this should be nice and familiar. A review of kinematics, what we spent a lot of time in Physics 11 looking at. We started out in Physics 11 telling you what acceleration was. The formal acceleration, uh, formal acceler the formal definition of acceleration, it's a change in velocity over a time interval. In math notation, our symbol for acceleration was delta V over delta t. Although you may have noticed with time we got sloppy and didn't put the delta in front of it after a while because time by definition is always a final minus initial change in because Jack to measure time you're starting and stopping and your whatever stopwatch you're using is actually going oh what's the final time of the day what's the initial time of the day subtract those and that's how many seconds elapsed. Oh yeah, since change in anything is final minus initial, you may have noticed a theme that you might want to add to your formula sheet if you haven't already. We can also write it as A equals VF minus VI over T. Then we rewrote this last year to get the VF by itself. We multiplied the T over and then we ended up with VF equals VI plus AT. And Jack, I gave you that one on your formula sheet again this year, yes? That's also my way of saying all of you, make sure you know where it is. So we're on the front page of your formula sheet under kinematics. I think that's the first one I put on there is VF equals VI plus AT. Remember that one? Okay. We're going to have to be a bit more careful this year because vectors, but okay. Uh, this assumes unchanging, fancy word, uniform acceleration. If you have a changing acceleration, calculus students, this becomes a derivative and you can do it, but you need calculus. Or as I just wrote, it gets a little ugly. Also, if you have uniform acceleration, you can find average speed written as V average. The symbol for average in math is that but I know from the back corner where Emily is, or when I type this, it's tough to tell the difference between that and the vector arrow. So I will almost always put a subscript average so that you can tell it's V average. That's not math correctness. That's I'm shrinking the notes down and you have to be able to read them from the back of the room correctness. How do you find the average? That's a good question. Suppose Matt has $10 and I have $20 between us, what do we average? Fifteen? How can you take a ten and a twenty, do some math, and get fifteen as an answer? So if you want to find the average velocity, it's your initial plus your final divided by two. I think I put that formula on your formula sheet. Heck, that's how you find the average of any two objects. Add them up and divide by two. A uh, little note for uniform acceleration, this average, you hit that number exactly halfway between the minimum and maximum velocities. It's a nice coincidence. Now, taking this VF equals VI plus AT and V average, we can start to define distance or displacement. Distance is defined, you know what? This is technically wrong. Displacement is defined as average velocity times time. Or as an equation, I wrote it here. I'll write it again big just so you can see it in the back. Displacement equals average velocity times time, or as I would probably write it, just so you can see that that's not a vector sign, there. And then I can put a vector on the top and say that still works because it's average velocity. Oh, and Matt, what did you just say that average velocity was? No, no, that was the money. What did we just say the formula for average velocity was? So what can I replace the V average with? VI plus VF over 2. I'm going to do that right here. And that gives me this equation. This is the one that you had last year, the bracket one. I didn't give it to you this year because to me it's kind of redundant. It's that and that. Okay. Oh, but 
since VF equals VI plus AT, I can replace this VF with that. I'll get D equals, in brackets, VI plus AT. So what I'm going to start doing for a little bit here, Paige, I'm going to stop the vector notation because it really clutters everything up. I'll bring the vector notation in at the very end again. So VI plus AT, there was already a plus VI right there. All over 2 times T. Armand, that's still VF plus VI or VI plus VF just written differently. Oh, uh, I'm deriving an equation. I will not make you derive an equation on the test, but I'm a nerd. I will almost always try and show you where stuff comes from. Hey, in the brackets here, what's 1vi plus 1vi? I can gather like terms. Is that... No, oh, no, I'm going to do that here. D equals... 2 VIs plus AT times T over 2. Now I'm going to get rid of brackets. I'm going to multiply into the brackets front door bomber. Some of your teachers have called it. Fancy word is distribution. If I do that, I'm going to get D equals 2 VIT plus AT squared all over 2. Yeah, yeah. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this fraction up. Because everything is being divided by 2, I can write it this way. D equals 2 VIT over 2 plus AT squared over 2. I haven't done, broken any rules. If everything is di being divided by 2, I can say everything is still being divided by 2. But why did I do that? Sky, is there a 2 on the top here? Is there a 2 on the bottom here? Hey, they cancel. And I end up with our old friend, D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. And now I can say that D is a vector, displacement, V is a vector, A is a vector. Ta da! Emily's awake now. Okay. And you remember that one from last year, and I've kind of referred to it already a couple of times this year, just a little bit, anyhow. D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. Okay, let's start over again with the same idea. Distance is average speed times time. So we'll start out with VF plus VI over 2 times T. But this time, since I know that VF equals VI plus AT, I'm going to get the T by itself, VF minus VI over A, and I'm going to plug that in for T. What happens if I do that? Well, I get D equals... I'll have VF plus VI over 2 times VF minus VI over A. We're multiplying fractions. It's two fractions being multiplied. Multiplying fractions is the easiest operation. It's top times top, bottom times bottom. No need for common denominators or anything like that. So I'll do the bottom first. How would I write 2 times A? 2A, you say. On the top, I have this. VF plus VI. VF minus VI. This is uh, FOIL, I think you call it, in your math days. In fact, even more specific, I think this is going to end up as difference of squares because both the brackets are identical, but one's got a plus, one's got a minus. Let's convince ourselves of that. What's VF times VF? So I'll have a new equation. D equals, I'll have a VF squared. Then I'll have a negative VIVF. 
I'll have a positive VIVF. What's negative VIVF plus VIVF? They cancel out, Jack. Oh, and then I'll have a VI times a negative VI. What's a positive times a negative? What's VI times VI? I heard it. And that's still all over 2A. And now I'm going to get the VF by itself. I'll times the 2A over. How would I move the VI squared over? Yep. And you get VI squared plus 2AD equals VF squared. I didn't derive that equation with you last year, Scott. We used it, and it's going to go in the box here on the next page. This is our good old VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. So everything, both of those equations, D equals VIT plus a half AT squared, and VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD, they come out of the concept of distance equals average velocity times time, and our definition of acceleration at being VF minus VI over T either getting the T by itself or the VF by itself and substituting them into each other. And so last year, I introduced this DFIC concept. I said, list your data, find a formula, insert the numbers, crunch the answer. I don't care if you follow that or not. I'm not going to give you marks for it. In fact, as you get good, many of you started skipping steps, and I'm fine with that. But this is one of my fallbacks. If I don't know what to do, when in doubt, dolp or defic. Try that. So, example one. A dragster has an acceleration of 38 meters per second squared. It begins from rest. Oh, Jack, what's A asking me to find? Which one is how fast? Is that an acceleration? For no. For no. How do I know it's not an acceleration? Because they gave me one. Yes? Okay. What's how fast? Which physics concept is that? Velocity. Is that it's asking me to find VF or VI? Now read carefully. What's VI? Oh, from rest. Probably last year I would have said something like, obviously you've underlined that. Again, if you don't do that this year, I'm not going to freak out, but it's a good habit, or at least mentally, ding, 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 ding. So, Jack, what does it want me to find? You said it. So VF equals question mark. What's that 38? What are the units next to that 38? So is it time? No. Is it distance? No. What is it? Now, you can figure it out from the word here. Even though, even if I hadn't used the word acceleration, remember I said it's worth memorizing units, and if I say it's worth memorizing something, because I hate memorizing stuff, then it's really worth memorizing something. So there's our A. Hey, folks, just under nerd trivia, how many Gs is that? How would I figure out how many Gs of acceleration that is? Do you remember? Divide by 9.8, or if I'm just busy, divide by 10. It's around 4 Gs-ish. Okay? So pulling some pretty good Gs. Yeah, it's a dragster. I'm okay with that. But not fatal Gs. You might recall we said bad stuff started to happen around 25 Gs. Usually bones started getting broken around 10 to 15 Gs, depending on how you absorb it. So we're okay. Uh, what would you say VI was, Jack? Good. What's that 2.1? How do you know? Yep. Okay. I'm looking for an equation that's got an A, a VI, a VF, and a T in it. There is one. Which one, my friend? And then I think last year I would have said, oh, Jack, why did you waste my time? And I would have said, you know, you could have just said AT. Why could you have skipped saying the VI? Because it's zero. And again, this I'm throwing a lot of stuff at you, and I'm just picking on you because you're sitting next to Manchand. I don't know. Uh, plug and chug. 38 times 2.1. I think I can do this in my head. It's going to be 38 plus 38 is going to be 68. It's going to be 76. It's going to be 76 plus 3.8. So it's going to be 79, 79.8. 
units velocity meters per second. Now, there's an implied direction. We got a positive answer, so we would say or assume uh, forward. I didn't include north, south, east. Somebody at the door? Okay. And they're just cleaning the doorknobs, right? They do that in the morning. Um, so there's an implied direction here with the positive. If the question had used words like north, south, east, or west, I would have made sure to include a compass direction in my final answer as well. Manchin, what's B want me to find? And technically, we're going to end up finding a displacement, I think. How many seconds in B? Manchin, my friend. How many seconds in part A? I'm not going to relist everything because it's the same situation. I'm looking for an equation that has, well, which equation? Ooh, very nice. You could also have used VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. The only thing then is you'd be using your answer from part A to find part B. You know what? This year, I'm not going to be caring so much. I'm going to find whichever is the laziest way to get me the answer. And the equation that you gave me already has the D by itself. It's 0.5 AT squared, 0.5 times 38 times 2.1 squared. Do you hear that one in your head, Mr. Do it? Yeah, not so much. If I knew what 21 squared was, I could probably get away with doing it. Ooh. I want my Timbits, but we can't, so just make sure your phone is on vibrate, please. Do you get 83.8? Okay. Armand, what's C want me to find? Okay, so what's C want me to find? Yeah. I, see, I always throw a how long question in because how long is that weird one? How long was the movie? That's time. How long is a football field? That's distance. So you always got to read careful. I'm glad you caught yourself. I agree. This one, time. Um, I think things have changed with that 126. What is that 126? Armand, what is that 126? Yeah. I think VI is still zero. Can I use the 2.1 time? No, and that wouldn't make sense anyways, because what are they asking me to find time? I think I can still, well, what can I still use though? Yeah, I think the acceleration is still 38. Armand, I'm looking for an equation that has a VF, a VI, an A, and a T in it. And do me a favor, get the T by itself. I'll give you a hint. T equals. I disagree. I think VF minus VI. Is it not? over A. And in fact, since VI is zero, you could have just said it's VF over A, but usually here I'll, I'll leave that in just as kind of a placeholder temporarily. So it's going to be 126 minus zero over 38. This might work out nice, does it? No, sorry. I thought this worked out to a nice decimal. No, no. 3.31578, how about 3.32 seconds? Cool. Harsh, what's D want me to find? Distance is right. Probably technically a displacement because if the acceleration had been slowing down, we would have put a negative in or... Okay, anyways, uh, what can I still use? Oh, what's that 153? Oh, yeah, yes. He got it eventually, YouTube, so don't judge him too harshly. 
Uh, what else can I use from the prior information? Is VI still zero? Yeah, I can use that. Can I use any of the time values that they've given me? I don't think so. Oh, what else? Can, oh, oh, um, still accelerating it. 38. Now, I should point out, for those of you who are nitpicky, dragsters don't have a uniform constant acceleration. It's bigger at the beginning and then it plateaus. We're having to assume a constant acceleration because we can't handle the calculus involved if it didn't. Okay. Or maybe I was clever. Oh, see, I should have said has an average acceleration. That's how I always hedge my bets. Anyways, Harsh, uh, which equation? Do I know T? Then that's not going to help. Get the D by itself, please. Yep. More specific. Read to me what our new equation would be. I'll give you a hint. D equals. Yep. 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 Okay. If there is one mistake that drives me cray cray, look up. I see this every year. I see some kid make up a new equation with no squared or make up a new equation with no squared and no two. I don't know where that comes from. I've never taught it. That's just making up nonsense in my mind. Don't think, I mean, all I can think is maybe they're saying uh, something like, oh, come back. Like maybe they're going, oh, the twos cancel somehow. I don't know, but don't do that. You you know, we got the equations. We got to use them. Uh, so uh, VF was 153 squared minus zero squared all over two times 38. And then last year I would have said something like, is this a fraction? And you would have said, yeah. And I would have said, is there more than one thing on the top? Brackets around the top. Is there more than one thing on the bottom? Brackets around the bottom. Unless you have the fancy schmancy fraction button two level fractions. 153 squared divided by bracket 2 times 38. Do you all get 308 meters? Yes? In fact, last year I might have said something like this. Don't write this down. There are one, two, three, four. There's five things in kinematics. And I think I would have said something like, if I know three, I know the fourth. Really, if I know three, I know all five. Because if I know four, I can find the fifth. If I know three of these, I can find all of them. And that's something we're going to be doing an awful lot when we start going two-dimensional. E. When the dragster hits a top speed of 162 meters per second, it deploys its parachute. A. If it takes 12 seconds for the dragster to come to a stop, what's its average acceleration? This one seems pretty obvious. A equals question mark. What's that 162? Which V? I heard somebody say VF. I heard somebody say VI. The good news is one of them is right. What? VI? Then what the heck is VF? Oh, it's coming to a stop. Okay. Am I expecting a positive acceleration here or a negative acceleration here when I crunch the numbers? Okay. We're in vector land. So VI is 162. I Googled these numbers, by the way. I can't remember which dragster I looked at, but these are pretty legitimate. Uh, VF is zero. I need one more thing because I need three things to find. Oh, 12 seconds. Kai, which equation? I'll give you a hint. A equals. Yep. And I know VF is zero. 
I would leave it in there because if you if you completely cancel out one side of the equation, things get weird. So even normally, I you know don't waste my time. No, leave the BF there for now because it's going to be zero minus 162 divided by 12. Definitely going to get a negative answer. What's our slowing down acceleration? Do you get negative 13.5? Pulling about one and a half G's roughly. Meters per second squared. B. Armand, what's B asking me to find? It's another how long? Is this one time? Or is this one distance? Read carefully. We're in example E. Hopefully you're not zoning out on me here. We're looking at part B. And how do I know it's not time? Because in A, they gave me the time, 12. OK? And I would probably. If I'd been doing these for a while, Grace, and was in mid-season form, here, because I've listed everything already, I might be tempted to just say, huh, D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. Now I'm using my answer from part A. Or I could go VF squared minus VI squared all over 2A, but I'm still using my answer from part A. Or if I remembered the one with the brackets that we used last year, I could do that without using my answer from part A. But what I'm saying is that one with the brackets from last year, the VI plus VF over 2, that one, it's redundant because I can survive without it. I would use D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. I would use an answer to find an answer because we're doing big, big grown-up things now. So I would go 162 times 12 plus 0.5 times negative 13.5 times 12 squared. I get 972 or not? Double check me. So this dragster is going fast enough once it pulls its chute, it needs almost a full kilometer to come to a stop. Get that okay, Davis? Again, make sure you're following along on your calculator. Armand, you're back with us? Yeah. Okay. Don't know where you were before. That's all good. Example three. You may have noticed I've been doing a lot of thought puzzles at the beginning of class with you. You are going to have a proof, a thought puzzle on a test. <gasps> we call these using principles of physics right to explain questions. And don't panic. We'll get good at these. Here is an example. It says this. An object starts at rest and accelerates east at a constant rate. habit as soon as I see that. How fast will it be traveling when it has traveled? How fast will it be moving when it has traveled 20 meters? Sorry, I read that wrong. An object starts at rest. It accelerates east at a constant rate. When it's traveled 10 meters, it's moving at speed v. How fast will it be traveling when it's, how fast will it be moving when it's traveled 20 meters, twice as far? A, v. B, more than 2v. C, exactly 2v. Or D, ah, less than 2V, but more than V. In other words, same speed, more than twice as fast, exactly twice as fast, faster, but not twice as fast. Once again, we're going to vote. How high you hold your hand up is how sure you are of the answer. So if you're accelerating at a constant rate, if you go twice as far, are you going twice as fast or not? Who says, no, Mr. Duke, obviously the answer is A. You're going to go the same speed, A. 
One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Why is A such a bad answer? I heard somebody saying it. Oh, and I heard you. What? Still accelerating. A can't be right. Sorry, 10 of you. Okay. It's speeding up. So, sorry, but 10 of you wasted a vote. Who says more than twice as fast? B. Min, was that a hand? That, that's a little... No? Okay. Who says it's obvious? Twice as far, twice as fast. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Who says for some reason I think it's D because that's the creepiest answer? One, two. Okay. First of all, you can do this algebraically, and it's a lovely proof. And eventually, by the end of the course, we'll start doing these completely algebraically. But for now, I gave you one trick earlier before I started the lesson. Look at extreme values as your proof, and that I won't take. Here, I'm going to make up some nice numbers and just crunch the numbers because they gave me some. So it looks like I have two situations. Situation number one, D is 10. Situation number two, D is 20. What's VI for both of them? It says it's accelerating at a constant rate. Make up a nice acceleration. The only thing is when you're making up numbers, never use one because the one times table behaves weird. You might spot a pattern that isn't there because one times five always gives you the same answer back. So don't use one. Give me a nice, oh, and I wouldn't use a 10 or a 20 because I've already got those in my question. They would confuse me. I might get them mixed up. So having said that, Manchin, make up a nice acceleration. Sure. I'd like to find VF here. I'd like to find VF here. And then I'll ask, is it this VF bigger, smaller, twice as big? I'll just compare the numbers. How would you find uh, VF? Which equation mentioned? Good, good recovery. You're not. You're, you are all far closer than you realize. Which equation has a D, an A, a VI, and a VF in it? There's only one. And then I would say to you, don't waste my time because VI is what? So I think we're going to have this. VF squared equals 2AD. VF squared equals 2A. Oh, how do I get rid of a squared? Ooh. This square root thingy is already making me doubt answer C. Let's plug in the numbers. So very quickly, what's 2 times 2 times 10 square root? What's this one work out to? Get your calculators out. Get your calculator out, Mansion. Come on, crunch the numbers. So in the first situation, we have... 2 times 2 times 10, square root of 40, I get what? 6.3? In this situation, I get 2 times 2 times, oh, this time D, D is 20. I get square root of 80, 8.9. Compare those two answers. What's the correct answer, A, B, C, or D? Two of you lucked out. Because I don't think you thought that intuitively. You were going with the answer that looks the weirdest is probably the right one or just trying to be different. But yeah. And it says explain your answer using appropriate principles of physics. There's my proof right there. Okay. 
By the way, if you really want to be fussy, it's not twice as fast after twice the distance. It's root two as fast after twice the distance because of that square root. So it's 1.41 times as fast. I am going to throw something like this on the written section of each of your tests. And don't freak out. We'll, we'll, we'll get there, okay? Often it will be a part B to a question, and I'll say, okay, now suppose I double the mass, what happens to the acceleration? Bigger, smaller, or stays the same? And you can either do it algebraically or prove it with making up numbers. Or I'll change one of the constraints and say, now what? Put your pencils down. off on a little tangent. We got one more. I like example four. I like example four. You know what? Example four, will you marry me? A rock is thrown straight up from a 245 meter high cliff with an initial vertical velocity of 46 meters per second. How long until it hits the ground at the base of the cliff? Cool. Sam, what's this asking me to find? Good. What's that 46? More specific, VI? You know, maybe we should dop. I'm going to do that over here. Here's our cliff. Looks like it's 245 meters high. And I guess what we're doing is we're standing with our toes in midair and we're throwing this up and it's going to come down and hit the ground down there. What's that 245? I'm going to be a little bit cryptic. It's nothing. We're not going to use that 245 because we need a displacement. Sam, are we ending up above or below from where we started? So, what's my displacement? Yes. That's only two things. I need three things. Oh, negative 9.8. I'm looking for an equation that has a T, a VI, a D, and an A in it. There is one. What are we trying to find? Last year, I used this equation, but if we were finding t, I always had to let vi be 0 because we couldn't get the t by itself because there's more than one t. What kind of an equation is this? How do I know? Oh, let's put in the numbers, and we're going to solve this with the quadratic formula. Negative 245 equals... 46t minus 4.9t squared. I did the half of negative 9.8 in my head. I've done it a bunch. Before I start to solve this, what's step zero? What about, oh, oh make it equal to zero? Okay. I can plus the 245 over, or I can minus the 4, or I can move these over. I have a habit of wanting this to be positive, just a personal preference. So I'm going to write this as positive 4.9t squared, take away 46t, and the negative 245 stayed where it was, so it just dropped down like a domino. Those of you that have a solver can now giggle, race ahead, and find t. Those of us that do not, let's write out the quadratic formula. t equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. It's going to be positive 46 
plus or minus the square root of negative 46 squared minus 4 times 4.9 times negative 245 all over 9.8. I wonder if I can do this in one step. I think I can. 46 plus square root of 46 squared. I didn't bother putting the negative in because I know the negative squared is going to cancel anyways, and I'm lazy. Minus 4 times 4.9 times negative 245. Close off the square root, close off the top, divided by 9.8. Those of you with your solvers, do you get 13.1817299? And then if I backspace and change the plus sign to a minus sign, I get negative 3.79. Ah, what? Typically, then, I reject that. Reject. Like Sam trying to dunk. Reject. Okay. It's always some basketball player that I pick for that dope. Okay. You don't like that one? Okay. Like Owen trying to call someone for a date. Reject. Is that better? No? I don't know. Sorry? No, I know. I haven't forgotten. Okay. So as far as I'm concerned, that question is now fair game. In fact, we're going to be using that one an awful lot in the future. This idea of I need to find a time dropping something or launching something from a cliff, VI is not zero. I can use the quadratic formula. Now what's your homework? That should, yeah, there we go. And you got the rest of class to work on the quiz. I wanted to give you an hour and a half. It's going to be almost exactly an hour and a half. So one is good. Two is good. Three is good. Four is good. Skip five. Six is good. Yeah, skip seven. Skip eight. Skip nine. Ten is good. Now, from that big ultimate review, if you want to, you're now capable of also doing those questions if you want to get a head start on it. So first thing you want to work on is the take-home quiz. Second thing you want to work on then is the homework. Third thing you want to work on then is the ultimate review.